You could have the best product, the best brand, the best service in the world, whatever it is, the best in the world. And without even a little marketing, nobody's going to see it. So this show is how you get people to see it. And if it's not the best in the world, which it most likely is, and I'm sorry, this is how you get the people who will care about it to see it. And then you can use the money that they give you to make it the best in the world. It's a recursive loop. And on this episode, I am going to share exactly how I got my newsletter to rank number two on Google for growth hacking newsletter. This was recent. I'm heading towards number one. I'm going to share everything that I did for this. I put this out in a newsletter on my newsletter, and I'm going to read that newsletter, the story of how I did it, and interject in between some things here and there, giving some more explanations. So if you search growth hacking newsletter on Google, you will see number one is not me and number two is me. And this is how I did this. So again, this is me reading now from my growth hacking newsletter about how I got my newsletter to rank number two for growth hacking newsletter. The changes that I made to my newsletter landing page SEO did not take long, and the results have been outstanding. What I'm going to share are optimizations that anybody can do. So here is the initial SEO data, the initial metrics behind the keywords, behind what I want to do, behind traffic that I'm getting. So this was written January 21 of this year, and I said, this recent week was good for this website's SEO, for edwardsterm.com's SEO. And then I share a screenshot about how my search visibility, because I track my keywords, I've been tracking my keywords for many, many, many years, the keywords that I care about, the search terms that I care about, the things that people are putting into Google that I care about, I've been tracking the performance of those in relation to my website for many years. And I share a screenshot about how I'm up in that week, 5.81%. Five of my keywords moved up, three of my keywords moved down. Every week you have volatility, every week it is expected to see the positions of your keywords changing, the rankings of your website changing. Unless you're number one, when you make it to number one or two, it tends to be a bit more stable. But going up to that, it's very volatile. I continue, I say, since mid-December, I've put more thought into the SEO for edwardsturm.com. Now, a month later, I'm seeing results. The SEO that I've done for my newsletter is a good example. On December 20th, 2023, now, this was, you remember, this is January 21st, so this is a month before. On December 20th, 2023, a feature came out about me in a major online publication. One of the things written is, for somebody who talks so much about shortcuts, it seems he takes the long cut. So this is on Hacker Noon. You can just search Hacker Noon, Edward Sturm. I had a big feature there. And so it says, for somebody who talks so much about shortcuts, it seems he takes the long cut. Edward Sturm puts out, a daily growth hacking podcast, one to four daily growth hacking videos, a weekly growth hacking newsletter. So it said growth hacking newsletter, linking to my newsletter. And so I started wondering, do people search for this? And I found that they do. And then I share a screenshot of the results that I get when I put growth hacking newsletter into my keyword data tool. So I use Keyword Explorer from Moz. It gives facts about keyword search terms. It gives facts about what people are putting into Google. So I search growth hacking newsletter, and I see that zero to 10 people search for this a month, which isn't a lot, not at all. But the thing is, I'll just keep reading, zero to 10 isn't much. However, as I wrote in a previous article, keyword volume estimations are always low. This is because if you rank number, this is a really important, important fact, by the way. And this fact is what allows me to rank for purchase intent keywords so easily. It's because people don't know this fact. If you rank number one on Google for one keyword, you will also rank high for many variations, misspellings, and similar keywords. I want to say this again. If you rank number one on Google for one keyword, you will also rank high for many variations, misspellings, and similar keywords. In reality, ranking number one for this keyword will make the page get 500 to 1,000 monthly clicks from Google by people looking for a growth hacking newsletter or digital marketing newsletter to subscribe to. That's a lot more than zero to 10. So zero to 10 is the keyword tools estimation. My estimation, having done SEO for a decade, it will actually be 500 to 1,000 clicks from search because ranking number one for this keyword, you will rank for many other similar keywords. And this is not shown in keyword tools. So it, you target this keyword, but it will get you to rank for lots of other keywords. And this keyword has a low difficulty score and high intent. The people searching are likely to convert and it's not too competitive, it won't take much effort on my part. So it's a really nice combination. High intent, the people who are searching for this are looking for a growth hacking newsletter to subscribe to. I have lots of copy on the page that shows them 
hey, this is what you're looking for. So it's high intent. The people are very likely to convert and the competition is very low. And enough people search for it to make it meaningful for the effort that I put in, which is not a lot to rank for this. And I'm going to share that. So now these are the changes that I made to the page to get it to rank for the keyword that I wanted. This is called on-page SEO, on-page search engine optimization, the changes that you make on a page. Before December 26th, the page had no mention of growth hacking newsletter. It had a growth hack in the heading, but nowhere else. So it only had growth hack in the heading, nowhere else on the page, nowhere else in the metadata, and it definitely didn't have growth hacking newsletter. Now this is less than a month before I, it was ranking number two for this keyword. The headline up until this point was, I will teach you how to growth hack. So I continue. I knew that to rank well for a growth hacking newsletter, it would be easiest to put this exact phrase. I, I wanna stop for a second because I wanna just, I wanna share how amazing SEO is as, as a tool. I said at the beginning of this episode, you could have the best product, the best service, the best brand in the world, and you need a little bit of marketing to get people to see it. If it's the best in the world, people will share it. It's most likely not the best and you're gonna need more marketing. The thing about this is I can sit, I can make this product, which is my newsletter, and then just sit at my desk or sit at a cafe, make a few changes to a page, and then all of a sudden, Google will just start sending me traffic for people who are interested in what I am offering. I think that's amazing. And so that's what this article is sharing how to do. So I'm gonna continue now. I knew that to rank well for growth hacking newsletter, it would be easiest to put this exact phrase in my page title, meta description, somewhere on the page. I could put it in other places too, but I felt this was the bare minimum. So I started with the page title. This is what you see when you hover over the page tab in a web browser. So if you hover over any page tab in Chrome or something, you see what the page title is. I didn't know what language to use for the page title. So I asked my friend Yuri, this is what I share the screenshot of our conversation. I said, which would you rather click? Because I was toying around with different titles for, for the page, for different, different page titles. I said, which would you rather click? The growth hacking newsletter favored by elite marketers, the growth hacking newsletter favored by top marketers. Yuri said, I guess last one, favored is a bad word, change it to red. And I, I just, I took his advice exactly. Yuri Chernin from darngoodads.com. He is a close friend of mine and an incredible copywriter. And so I went with it exactly. And I made the page title, the growth hacking newsletter read by top marketers. So I'm targeting growth hacking newsletter. The page title is the growth hacking newsletter read by top marketers. And then I also put it in the meta description. This is the description that shows up under the title in Google. For any content management system, you can set the page title and the meta description very easily. If you're on WordPress, a lot of people are on WordPress. I recommend Yoast. That is what I use, but there are so many others that you can use that make it really easy to change this. And so my meta description was, join Ed's growth hacking newsletter to get his top secret marketing exploits in your inbox every week. And then finally, I added this to the copy on the page, what I wrote on the page. So I needed an excuse to put the keyword in the copy because I didn't have it in the copy and I needed it to flow well with the rest of the page's writing. So what I did is I, I have a Q&A section and I added in a question, what exactly is this? And the answer, this is my growth hacking newsletter, which I email out personally every Sunday. I will share with you the hacks I know and do to get more visibility users and customers for my brands. Flows very perfectly. So all of these changes took me five minutes. It took me longer to make the write-up that I am reading to you right now than it took to make the changes to the page. This podcast will be longer than it took me to make the changes to this page. And the results were very quick. The moment I made these changes, I started tracking performance for Growth Hacking Newsletter in relation to my website. And the next day after I made these changes, I, I made these changes, I submitted the page to Google Search Console. This is Google's proprietary tool for accessing their search index. And so you can make changes to your site or to a page, submit those changes to Google so Google will know immediately. That's what I did. You just put it in the URL bar at the top of your property on Google Search Console, click submit, say that there were changes made, request for indexing, and very easy, very, very, very easy. I think it's like two clicks, two or three clicks. So the next day after making these changes, I showed up in position 15 on Google for growth hacking newsletter. The week after, the next week, I showed up for number five. The week after that, number seven. Remember, it's volatile, up and down. And then after showing up number seven, the next week, number two. And that's where I am right now. Something to note here, this is me continuing reading. 
Something to note here, by the way, often it takes time to rank. Even after you put in the work, it may take weeks or months to show up in the top spots. Sometimes it's instant, but this is unusual. Typically, expect some waiting time. Don't get discouraged if you have to wait. A rule on this show is that everything takes longer than you think it's going to take. SEO is, a, is the same case. I've heard stories where people will make huge pages, super long pages to rank for their keywords. It's not ranking. They spend all this time on this or it, it's ranking, but it's not ranking well. And then they go back to it months later and they read it and they just realize that the content isn't good. And they make a few tweaks to the intro. They get people hooked better. They make these changes, submit it to Google Search Console, and then it starts ranking. So things can take longer than you expect. You may have to make changes yourself. But the beauty with this method, which I am sharing, is you go after these overlooked keywords because people think the search volume is too low. When in reality, when you rank number one for these keywords, the, the clicks that you get from Google are actually quite high. All right, so now we get onto a section called building links. You need backlinks to show up on Google. Backlinks tell Google that your website, your property, your domain is authoritative and that Google should trust the content on it so you can show up for what you wanna show up for. So I wrote, ranking number one is more competitive. And then I share the screenshot of the SERP analysis tool, which is a tool that I love from Moz. And I say, the page I'm competing with is authoritative, has growth hackers in the URL, and has the direct keyword in the page title. So I'm number two. Number one, it's from growthhackers.com forward slash newsletter. Mine is edwardsturm.com forward slash newsletter if you want to check it out. But what I'm competing with, number one, is growthhackers.com forward slash newsletter. And it says, stay ahead of the curve. This is the page title. Stay ahead of the curve with our growth hacking newsletter. Their authority, which is what I just explained to you, the website authority is 66 out of 100 minus 32 out of 100. So they have more authority than me, more than twice as much. But my page is way more optimized than theirs. Theirs is 79 out of 100 page optimization. That's how directly they are targeting the keyword. Whereas I am targeting the keyword 94 out of 100. So targeting the keyword, making sure that Google knows that your page is exactly about this one keyword it's a very easy way to rank high, and that is what I'm doing. And then there's some other things, so I want to keep reading. Additionally, the individual page has a bunch of backlinks. However, and there's a big however, this is the page. And so I share a screenshot of the page, and then I say, there's virtually no copy. So by sheer virtue of having a lot more copy, I believe I can beat it. I have a lot more copy. I'll need more links, though. I'll need more backlinks, though. I've already successfully been using feature.com to get links to my main website. I've talked about feature.com a lot on this show. I had at this time a 79% success rate of submitting answers to journalists looking for quotes. That's what feature.com is. It's journalists who are looking for quotes. They put out their question. Experts can respond to that. And the thing about feature.com is I have been getting really good results with it. If I answer a journalist question, there is a 79% chance that what I write is going to be accepted and put in that publication. And then I might get a backlink from that. There's a good chance that I will, in fact. So I continue, but I'll also need more links going to my newsletter page. This will tell search engines that the newsletter is reputable. So there's authority for a whole domain, but there's also authority for the specific page. And this is what I'm trying to achieve now. Two mornings ago, I Googled newsletter directories and I found a big list of directories to submit my newsletter to. And that's just what I did. I created a spreadsheet to track the language I use on each directory. This makes it easy in the future to change language and have it stay consistent across directories. So I have four columns. This is what I am tracking for the language that I put from my own newsletter. So the name of my newsletter is always Edward Sturm's newsletter. Sometimes it's Edward Sturm's digital marketing newsletter. The tagline can be something like impactful growth hacks and digital marketing case studies and tricks. So it's a variation of that tagline. Then I have the description, which is quite long. I won't read it. And then the topics, growth hacking, marketing, social media, search engine optimization, paid media. This way I can have the messaging stay the same across directories, across the directories that my page and my newsletter appear in. I submitted my newsletter and my newsletter's URL to each directory. The beauty here is you get to craft the language around the brand yourself. I did some keyword research and found that digital marketing newsletter will be a good keyword to go after in the future. So I made sure to put digital marketing into each directory along with growth hack. 
This tells Google that edwardsturm.com has a reputable growth hacking newsletter and digital marketing newsletter. And that's it. I suspect I'll have to do a few more weeks of waiting to get to number one for growth hacking newsletter, though I'm already getting traffic and signups from being number two. Thank you to everybody listening who found me through Google by finding growth hacking newsletter. Also, I'm inspired by what else I can use this method for. And that's specifically the directory method, because I say there are directories for everything. And then I actually share a podcast episode 199 of this show. It's called Directories for SEO, How I Get Industry Backlinks with Ease. And that's about how there are directories that can give you backlinks in any niche. And I write, I can use this to get backlinks in relevant SEO language to every aspect of my brand. And you can with your brands too. This is from my Growth Hacking Newsletter. I changed the name of the article after I published it on my site. It's different from what the subject line was on the newsletter. I just made it a bit more SEO friendly and I changed the article how to do SEO for a newsletter. So if you search how to do SEO for a newsletter, Edward Sturm, you can see this article or you can just go to edwardsturm.com forward slash articles and you can find it right there. I have a list of all of my articles. And this is episode 234 of The Edward Show. This is my daily, every day, seven days a week growth hacking and growth marketing podcast. If you're growth hacking, SEO can get you a lot of users. It's not the fastest method, but it is a very reliable method. And if you're growth marketing, for a lot of your money, I would totally recommend into a bottom of funnel SEO strategy because then you can rank for so many purchase intent, high converting keywords that your competitors aren't seeing. I talk about this more. I have another article you can look at. It's called My Love Letter to Bottom of Funnel SEO. Or you can just listen to this podcast. I talk about it all the time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.